So, a white woman is being cancelled on the internet for racism. And this time, it isn't me. It's Noodlegate the sequel. We're doing Noodlegate 2, baby. This is the tweet that I found that made me realize that this entire discourse was happening because time is a circle. So Queer Latifah quote tweets Eric Rivera, who I'll get to very soon, and said, Why is someone who is not of Asian descent, better yet from Australia, opening a sushi spot in New York City? What does this remind you of, chat? I know what it reminds me of. This discourse haunts me. We will never be free of this discourse. This got so heated. Queer Latifah literally said about this Australian woman's sushi restaurant, wouldn't be surprised if folks find this video and it's a wrap for her windows. Later on after this, while people were getting really mad at her for making that comment, she actually reached out to someone and said, hey, I would appreciate if you took your video down before I press charges. My tweet was not from a place of harm and now I am receiving death threats. Why would you say it's a wrap for her windows if you're t you were not coming from a place of harm? So I could I didn't actually include the original video because uh she deleted her tweets and Eric Rivera locked because of the what you're about to see. So in Queer Latifah's replies, we did it. We stopped a crime because they bullied the Australian woman so bad she deleted all of the videos on her TikTok account. For a good couple days, she also took her website down and her restaurant got like Google review bombed to the point it was one star. It's back up to five now because Google took down all of the harassment. So this is where the discourse starts. There aren't enough good sushi places in New York City, so time to open one. If you don't see why this is a problem, you are part of the problem. Elon Dusk is here to tell you that it's okay to tell you all it's okay to make sushi anywhere you want and you should all lighten up. And he also lost a ton on crypto, so please be kind and colonize wherever. So I think it should go without saying that an Australian woman opening a sushi restaurant in New York City is not colonization. That doesn't make any sense. Who is being colonized? People just use the word colonization anytime they want. But someone added a context note here after Eric said, but it's Australian sushi. Give me a break, colonizer. The user is implying there is something unethical about opening an Australian sushi restaurant. He is opening a Puerto Rican izakaya restaurant, which could be construed as breaching the same ethical lines. And here it is. Here is Eric Rivera planning to open his Puerto Rican Izakaya restaurant. It's literally the same thing. Why is a Puerto Rican man mad that a white Australian woman is opening a fucking sushi restaurant when you are also opening a Japanese restaurant in North Carolina of all places? So Jai got involved. Apparently, she's done being a self-proclaimed champion of trans rights and decided she's better fit to being a crusader for white people appropriating ethnic foods. And I, all I was saying was, so a white Australian woman opened a sushi restaurant and people bullied her into deleting her social media. I wonder why this story seems so familiar. Oh wait, Eric Rivera's also the same guy that said Bon Appetit was gentrifying saltines by baking them with spices and oil. Never in my life did I ever expect anyone to gentrify saltine crackers, but here we are from an expected source. Bon Appetit. What? My go-to. Saltine crackers plus canned sardines and canned sardines and tomato sauce and canned seafood in general. Saltine crackers plus that canned cheese. Saltine crackers plus American cheese in 30 seconds of microwave. Saltine crackers baked up over soup. And the Alabama firecracker option for saltine is shit. Mid-century party snacks don't make the cut. And that's not southern food. It's a cry for help. I'm so confused. So wait, wait, wait. If you have saltine crackers lying around, this is a great way to make use of it. Make this like oily spiced mixture in a Ziploc bag. Dump in a bunch of saltine crackers and then you let them sit overnight. Half and half olive oil and vegetable oil. To use a full cup of olive oil is 
frankly expensive. You don't need it to all be that. Some of it can just be doing the like fattiness without all of the flavor. And then we're gonna add a little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of za'atar. We're gonna seal up our bag and zhuzh that around. Saltines going in the bag. So now we're gonna seal that up and then zhuzh it all over. Movie magic. These guys have been sitting overnight. It has. How is this gentrifying salt? You just this this bitch just uses words. This bitch literally just uses whatever buzzword he thinks is going to make people mad. This is literally what seasoning is: olive oil, sesame seed paste, uh, fucking cilantro. That was all it. You got like two. It's a you got like two oils and like two spices. So. This is where the noodle Karen has stepped in. Rosalind got involved, as we knew she would. Why do white women think they know what is or isn't cultural appropriation? So, I can answer this question because white people are the best at cultural appropriation. So I, I absolutely do know when something is or isn't cultural appropriation. We have a long history of culturally appropriating things. Another tweet. Holy fuck, she's just straight up arguing for cultural appropriation. I mean, she always has, but this is weirdly blatant. Three of those are Asian countries that have shared histories and make similar dishes with shared traditional foods. The other three are white Western nations like... And this is in response to me saying that sushi is different based on the country. Chinese sushi is different from Korean sushi, different from Japanese sushi, different from American sushi and German sushi and Russian sushi. Sushi is a very international food that changes to the regional taste of the country that it's in. So someone here said, why does she hate Asian people so much? Like, what the fuck is the actual problem here? Also, who's buying sushi from a white Australian anyways? I wouldn't trust that sushi to taste good if my life depended on it. So here she is basically saying that there is something like intrinsic about an Asian person's bloodline that makes them good at making sushi rolls. This is literally fucking racist. Like, this is, this is food. This is food. There's nothing like intrinsic about being Asian that makes you better at making sushi. Like I would definitely, if someone is a white sushi chef who has studied sushi and has been making sushi for multiple decades, they are better at making sushi than an Asian person who has no experience making sushi. I don't know why that's hard to comprehend for people. Okay, how many of you remember Clown Town? This feels like a throwback. I didn't know that they were still around saying crazy shit about me. So to the people who are new and don't remember Clown Town, they made a video about me last year called Keffels is a Bigot. And in that video, the points were I added the Italian flag to the pride flag and I said noodles are tasty and I called Jaya Tumor. <laughs> That's those people. Yeah. And they said... Gaza is literally going through a genocide, can she not? This is what I mean by this, like, activism that's based on whatever is going to get them the most upvotes because Palestine was being subjected to genocide when she decided to put out a Keffels is a bigot video and she's invoking Palestinian genocide in response to if a white woman can cook sushi or not. It's just fucking brain dead. Relevant image in Discord general? Oh my god, hold on. Hold the phone. <laughs> That's them. They got so mad about this. Chat turned them into Wojaks. Hold on, I gotta show- I gotta move myself so you can see this in, in its full glory. Whoop. <laughs> I fucking love chat, I swear to god. Okay, so, the noodle Karen weighs in. White Australian woman opening a sushi restaurant because there are no good sushi spots around is not equivalent to Korean slash Chinese diaspora running Japanese restaurants. The white Australian woman was specifically saying that there are no sushi restaurants that make sushi in a Australian style. Australian sushi is distinct, just like American sushi is distinct. No, exactly. Like, I was actually looking at the sushi rolls that they make, and it's like, they're uncut. They have, like, a unique set of ingredients, nothing, like, out of the ordinary. They really like teriyaki sushi, which I have not actually had. Rosalind continues, 
Conflating East Asian people with white people, describing this phenomenon as mostly harmless is kind of gross, by the way. Becky's opening ethnic restaurants is a mundane and annoying occurrence. Day ending and why? People harassing that woman is just as annoying and over the top, but calling this mostly harmless is dishonest and flat out wrong. Who is being hurt? This is what I really hate, is when you talk about harm, who is being hurt in this circumstance? If someone doesn't want the Australian sushi, they can go to one of the other, like, what, thousand sushi restaurants in New York City? So in the replies here, I cannot imagine how in the heck someone can try to argue that a Korean-owned sushi place is anywhere near the same as a white woman opening up a sushi bar. So fucking weird. And I don't understand exactly how it is weird when sushi is a very international food. Rosalind decided to post my opinion here. I said, I like the idea that anyone who is Asian, even if they are from a country that historically never made sushi, is fine. But an Australian woman is uniquely awful for doing so. And she said, oh, she's ignorant, ignorant, laugh my ass off. Historically never made sushi. Maybe if she spent her time reading instead of doing drama and react content, she wouldn't be on here showing her pasty ass every two business days. I don't know, maybe if Rosalind actually made content, she wouldn't be a failed content creator that makes $60 a month on Patreon. But that's, I digress. Let's actually see what her arguments are. She posted two things from Wikipedia, saying that the earliest form of sushi was possibly from the Mekong River Basin, which is now Laos, Cambodia, and Thailand. And she also posted introduced during Japanese colonial rule, Korean sushi, kimbap. She's basically arguing here that Korean people only like sushi because they were colonized, which is a really reductive argument that takes away autonomy of Korean people. Korean people make their own variant of sushi because they like it, because sushi is tasty. The fact that they were colonized and freed themselves from, co from Japanese colonial rule has nothing to do with that. A good example of this would be Vietnam with, um, what is the name of that sandwich? Bon Mi. Bon Mi is a Vietnamese sandwich that has its origin in French colonial rule. It is still made today after they freed themselves from colonial rule because it's tasty. It is so fucking good. But I also want to like point out this idea of his historically never made sushi. And she's like talking about Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, Japan and China. Did, did, did people in India historically make sushi? What about Indonesia? What about Pakistan? What about Bangladesh? What about Iran? What about Turkey? What about Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, Uzbekistan, Yemen, Malaysia, Nepal, North Korea, Syria, Kazakhstan, Sri Lanka, Azerbaijan, Jordan, United Arab Emirates? What about Israel? What about Kuwait? What about Oman? What about Lebanon? Like, there are 48 countries in Asia. They did not all historically make sushi. It is a stupid argument. Guess who else got involved? Because Wop Goblin is now in the Noodle Karen Alliance. This was in Rosalind's replies. I don't understand how people can see her crusading for white people who were canceled for their race as anything but what it is. Her obsession with this is obviously alt-right white identity politics shit but her followers lap it up because a trans woman said it. I don't think anyone cares that I'm trans and it plays a very minimal role in my content, but also I think people like Rosalind and Wapgoblin are actually far more racist than anything I have said. I think the idea that only certain foods can be made by people of certain races is inherently a far right position and it honestly enables the logic of fascism. Like, my, my position here is not that, like, the Australian woman is being cancelled for being white. My position here is that people don't know what cultural appropriation is, and they overstate the harm of what they view as cultural appropriation. There are definitely arguments that can be made when there is legitimate cultural appropriation that is incredibly disrespectful to a country of origin or to an ethnic group. For instance, war bonnets, Native American war bonnets, those are only given out by 
leaders of tribal groups and appropriating that and like wearing it to burning man while you're fucking like high as a kite is obviously culturally appropriating it and making it lose its original meaning i think that is like a really good example of what cultural appropriation is and how it can be harmful yeah it's more like mockery at that point but an australian woman making sushi is not mocking sushi no one's eating Australian sushi because they hate sushi. They eat Australian sushi because they like sushi. So blood also got involved here because now, now like all of these forces are coalescing. Blood was in the replies of Rosalind and so was WAP working together to make the most stupid discourses imaginable. And blood said, it's really impressive how Clara is making white fragility part of her branding. She going to have Nick Fuentes on soon to debate? And I bring this up, I think it's really funny. At one point, Blood had also said that it was her sincerely held religious belief that it would be objectively hilarious if Jai, a black trans woman, got an inoperable brain tumor. So I don't know about all of you. I just think sushi is tasty. I've never wished death on a black person before, but I know Blood has.